Hi, my name is Becky Johnson, and I'm a senior systems engineer at AGI. Today, I'm going to show you a quick demonstration that highlights SDK EOIR and its ability to model the detection, tracking, and imaging of sensors for a space situational awareness application. The scenario that I have here is an installed scenario with EOIR. So we're going to start and look at three different examples. The first thing that we want to look at is a LEO satellite looking at a GEO satellite. So a couple of things we want to note in our 3D window right off the bat. So we have the LEO satellite that is transiting the Earth, imaging the GEO satellite. We want to take a look at what that sensor can see in terms of the geometry and the lighting conditions and how we're able to resolve that image using an EOIR sensor. When you have an EOIR installed, you have the ability to model the sensor characteristics. The way that's done, if I open the properties for one of my sensors, in the basic definition page, what you'll see is a series of pages tabs, if you will, for the spatial, spectral, optical, and radiometric properties for the EOIR sensor. You can model multiple bands. Here you see two that have been modeled. In the spatial setup, we're modeling the horizontal and vertical field of view of the sensor, as well as the number of pixels. In the spectral setup, we're modeling the upper and lower band edges, depending on what wavelength it is that you're considering here, as well as the number of intervals. For the optical setup, you're looking at things like the F number, the longitudinal to focus, the focal length, as well as the image quality. So we can do anything from diffraction limited, so a perfect situation, through optical aberrations, also um, up to the custom data files that the user has the ability to import for image quality. In the radiometric setup of the sensor, we're looking at the radiance or irradiance of the sensor, either at a high level or you can also switch it to a low level. So that provides a higher level of fidelity for the customer to bring in information for the radiometric portion of the sensor. So once that's set up, in this case, the one that we are looking at is a 1.5 degree horizontal and vertical half angle for the sensor. So we're going to be able to see how well we're able to resolve that geo satellite. The way that that's done in SDK is through a synthetic scene generator. With EOIR installed, you have a plugin which gives you the option to create that synthetic scene by making use of the little telescope button along the plugin. So if I highlight the sensor that I'd like to generate that synthetic scene for, click that little telescope button. It'll take a couple of seconds, but then it'll generate that synthetic scene. Now, what you're looking at here is an image where the object isn't well lit. So we, we might want to consider changing the geometry such that the lighting conditions will allow for uh, a better synthetic scene. You can see a couple of objects in here uh, that, that you may, may be able to resolve, like such as a bright star down here. But let's go ahead and change our geometry so that our resident space object is more well lit by the sun. And then let's regenerate that synthetic scene. As I do this, we're now able to see that we have more images within the synthetic scene that we're able to take a look at. If I were to animate this scenario, so I'm just going to step forward in time. This is one way that the user can figure out what it is that it is, might be in their synthetic scene, depending on if you're looking at, in this case, a star background or an image that might be intertwined with the stars. So in this case, the image, the geo satellite that I'm looking at is right here. It's remaining stationary while the stars move around it. If I right click in the synthetic scene, I can bring up a details window. This allows the user to click on the pixels and provide information about objects in the synthetic scene. For instance, I just clicked on a star, and it's given me information about the catalog number, the uh, right ascension and declination, as well as the temperature and material for that star. All the stars in EOIR are modeled as black body point sources, so that information is all coming from the catalog. You can also change the color map, uh, the scene detail, as well as contrast and brightness of the scene. For instance, now if I click on the object in the center, which happens to be our satellite, you'll notice that it's giving us the name GEO. This is an object that's represented in our scenario called GEO. So it's also giving us information about the distance to that object, the azimuth elevation, and the temperature and material properties for that object. 
oftentimes the 3D visualization is great and we want to be able to see that synthetic scene. But being able to look at the analytics and everything that's being calculated under the hood oftentimes goes a long way to give a nice complement to the 3D window. So we can generate the signal to noise ratio versus time in a graph that will give us information about what's going on with these two objects, the geometry and the lighting conditions, such that we can then take a look at them both together. So if I minimize my graph a little bit, place it up in the upper right hand corner such that I can still see the 3D window and my graph, and then I hit play, what we're able to see is that signal to noise ratio vastly changing as well as the dropouts that we're seeing in here. And the reason for that in this case is as that LEO satellite's traveling around the Earth, when it's on the back side and it doesn't see the GEO satellite, we're seeing those vast dropouts of the signal to noise ratio. But this is a really good representation of that analytically, being able to look at the graph as well as what's going on in the 3D window to give us that indication of how we're able, gonna be able to resolve that image and when for these two objects. Now let's move into another example. Let's take a look at a LEO satellite imaging another LEO satellite. In this case, you'll see that there is an, a yellow line indicating that the second LEO satellite's orbit is illuminated by the sun. So this is important because we wanna be able to see with different backgrounds, how well we're able to resolve this image. And the first one that we're going to start with is the star background. So once again, it's going to be similar to what we've seen before in the sense that we have a number of different stars in our synthetic scene. We may not know what our object of interest is that we're tracking, but we can animate that forward to give us a better indication. And then if we look in our synthetic scene, we can see this object is remaining stationary as the other objects, the stars, are passing through the synthetic scene. One thing the user can also do is turn on motion blur for the stars. So in this case, the stars would appear to blur as they move through the scene and the object of interest that we're focused on would remain stationary in the center. If we wanna take a look at an Earth daylight background, we can generate that synthetic scene to get more information about what that would look like and whether or not we'd be able to resolve that image. So in this case, you'll see that we have the uh, sensor field of view represented here again. In this case, the satellite's image or the satellite's orbit track is once again illuminated by the sun, but so is the Earth's background. So in this case, we're not really able to resolve an image I guess, against this background because we have both um, daylight on the ground as well as the, the satellite itself. Finally, we can look at an Earth night background. So in this case, once again, the object is being illuminated by the sun and the Earth behind it is dark. So we're really able to see quite well what that object would look like against that dark background. One more thing that we can do is generate a synthetic scene graph that gives us an indication of what this is going to look like for this background. So this graph gives you an indication of how the signal to noise ratio is going to drop off as well as the target irradiance as the satellite moves from uh, a sun illuminated orbit into eclipse. So you'll notice we have the line right here indicating that that's happening. The satellite's getting ready to move into its eclipsed part of the orbit. And so both the signal to noise ratio as well as the target irradiance are dropped off. And then they'll come back up again as it continues around in its orbit again. Now, finally, we can look at a ground to space application. So if we move into uh, looking at a sensor that's located in Socorro, New Mexico and looking straight up, we wanna be able to see once again, what that sensor would be able to resolve from a synthetic scene perspective. Now, in this case, you'll notice that this satellite is going to track through the field of view from the bottom left to the upper top right and we wanna be able to see what that looks like. So if we generate a synthetic scene, in this case, one of the things that we can do here again is animate through this scenario to see how this satellite tracks through the scene. It's a very faint object here that you'll see in the synthetic scene and it can track through that space. Oftentimes though, folks would like to output the information that's coming from the synthetic scene and then post-process it after the fact, which is something that you can definitely do with EOIR. And this is a case where we've taken those output images and created a video. 
And if you'll notice, this is actually tracking through the scene here in the video where we've uh, put together the different scenes of the output for the object itself. One other item to note is that the target objects, you have a couple of different ways of modeling each of the target objects. In this case, our geo satellite was represented as a sphere. So if you go to the basic EOIR shape page, you'll notice that was represented as a sphere with um, a three meter radius and a single material and temperature was applied. We can also look at for the LEO imaging example, we selected a more um, composite shape, a LEO imaging satellite that was created for us. Once again, then we can define a single material to those satellite to that satellite, or we can define different material properties to each part of the satellite. We can also either define a static temperature, one temperature that remains the same, or we can bring in a time dynamic thermal profile. This could be done using something called um, STK SEAT, the Space Environment Effects Tool. Could also be another application that you may have for thermal modeling and you want to bring that in externally. That's another thing that can be done if you have your own thermal models. One other item to note is if you have a custom mesh, we do ship with a number of OBJ files that have been created in Blender. Uh, these are about a thousand polygons or less of uh, multiple objects that you can load in as target objects in the EOIR, or you can create your own, and this would be the way that you would select that as the target object as well. So you have the ability and the flexibility to model the sensors, both on the, on the, the sensor side as well as the target objects. Uh, to create that synthetic scene in EOIR. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions about EOIR, feel free to go to our website at www.agi.com.